case report. Initial investigative documentation. Submitted by Raven Inkwell. Location, Ponyville. Case, Ponyville Mass Disappearance. Classification, Top Secret. What follows as the report regarding the township of Ponyville, pertaining to the events that led to a widespread disappearance of all townsfolk and surrounding citizens, and subsequent events surrounding its investigation? A journal was found by myself in the Ponyville Library, where Princess Celestia's personal student, Twilight Sparkle, was keeping residence since her relocation to Ponyville. It is a case-bound journal kept in very pristine condition and reads research notes in print on the front cover. All pages are intact, except for a few exceptions which will be noted when they occur. The library itself was a mess, with books, notes and various supplies including quills, ink, water, food and lanterns strewn about the floor and on the shelves. They were, however, well arranged, leading me to believe that the pigsty, as Agent Verdant Vines dubbed it, was not a potential case of breaking and entering. Given my experiences with Twilight Sparkle when she resided in Cantalot, this would be true to form. The journal was found on a desk that had been moved to the room's centre, accompanied by a plain quill and an empty container of ink. The desk was stained with a few blots of ink, and while a struggle may have been possible, it is not certain this is the case. The rest of the town was in a similar condition, and some buildings were barricaded, but all were stocked with similar basic provisions and lanterns, with a few exceptions where the buildings were entirely empty. Several streets contained debris, but they only appeared to be shards of glass from broken lanterns or pieces of wood torn from houses and storefronts. None of the actual doors or windows of any building were broken or in disrepair, but some interior doors appeared damaged. No other substantial notes, writings or other evidence related to what occurred have been found. The town hall, however, was completely empty of anything not nailed down, except for the mayor's office, which was in normal condition. I have taken pains to include as much documentation as has survived whatever event occurred in Ponyville, in the hopes it will lead us to find the missing citizens, or at least what happened to them. Sincerely, Raven Inkwell, advisor to Her Majesty Princess Celestia. Case number 3467. March 26th. Well, I just got back from picking up another month's worth of supplies with Spike. I saw this journal sitting in the window of a store and figured it'd be a better alternative to write down some notes on my experiments or research I end up doing during my studies. It tends to get a little difficult to find all those pieces of parchment if Spike or I don't organize them correctly. I've been meaning to start a journal again too, but that's a secondary priority for now. Hopefully, I can finally start getting some work done again with everything stocked up. Mixing Experiments, March 29th. Experiment number one. Five milligrams bitter root, crushed. 200 milliliters of water. 10 milligrams of doubled thyme, crushed. Four petals of sweet bloom. Soaked sweet bloom petals in water for two minutes and then removed from solution. Added bitter root and mixed until normal acidic reaction occurred. Added double time after about 10 seconds of reaction, and solution began to settle. Remained calm for 10 minutes, after which reaction resumed for 50 seconds to a minute and then stopped. Zakora's suggestion was helpful for calming the mixture, and it did taste a lot sweeter than my usual tea. I'll have to share it with the girls if I get a chance. Experiment number two. 15 milligrams dragon leaf, crushed. 300 milliliters of water. 50 milligrams of hydra extract, powdered. 25 milligrams of poison joke, crushed. Hydra extract and dragon leaf, when mixed in the listed amounts with water, are often used as a sedative for medical operations. It also has a mild effect on plant life, causing a slight shriveling of leaves and flowers on a plant in small doses, with no long-term damage to the plant observed. Poison joke has rather unpredictable effects on ponies, and I thought a few experiments on it might be helpful in understanding it. 
the hydra extract and dragon leaf were mixed in the water and its effects observed with a 20 milliliter dosage added to one potted sunflower. The edges of the leaves curled inwards toward the midrib and the flower's petals began to fold back toward the stigma. The crushed poison joke was added to the mixture and given time to settle before a 20 milliliter dosage was added to the original sunflower. The leaves and flower petals unfolded to their original shapes. Another 20 milliliter dosage of the mixture with poison joke was added to a second potted sunflower. Within one minute, two more leaves began to grow from the stem at an alarmingly fast rate. The growth stopped, however, just as the leaves began to unfurl. I'll have to try a few more experiments with it to get a better grasp of its uses. There were several quill indentations in the next three pages that did not match up with the shown writing. April 1st. Well, it seems like Pinky decided to use an old staple for April Fool's Day. Vanishing ink, again, while I was doing some spell research over the weekend. This time it didn't start to disappear until I was finished. A few days of work gone. But it's nothing to worry too much over. Besides, I had a backup plan in case she tried a prank today. Brought her an enchanted exploding cupcake, and the look on her face was priceless. Anyway, I'll have to wait until next weekend to give the research another go, though, because Applejack asked for some help with planting this season. She said they were going to add a few dozen trees to the orchard and could use some help getting the new land ready and fenced off. Hopefully, Pinky worked out all her pranking today so we don't get sidetracked. If she only knew what ride on the roads ahead, while we did in the shadows. April 2nd. Just got back from Sweet Apple Acres with Spike, and boy, was it a long day. We had to get started early, but we managed to get the fences put in and the soil ready for planting before the end of the day. Applejack says we can probably get finished with all the planting tomorrow, and then we can spend the rest of the week watering or helping her out with the rest of the orchard, although she insists her family can handle the rest on their own. We probably could have finished more if we hadn't been interrupted in the middle of the day, though. Jellybean stopped by the farm, asking if anyone had seen her brother since yesterday. She kept asking if it was some late prank he was pulling with Pinkie Pie, but she insisted it wasn't. Something about it being in the blue saddlebag if you missed it. I'm sure he was just out and about for the day, or maybe took a trip over to Trottingham for a day or two. I do remember hearing that he was trying to find a shop there that would buy his family's treats. Hopefully he'll turn up soon, and whatever Pinky's prank was, wasn't too jarring. Anyway, I just have to double check to make sure all the books I used over the weekend are still where I left them before I head off to bed. Want to make sure I can get started as soon as I have free time. The first two have long gone, just like all the others now, but they found a new home. April 3rd. We finished helping Applejack with her planting on the new part of the orchard today. Spike said he'd take care of the cleaning I was planning to do when we got home, so I decided to drop by Jelly's house to see if she had any news about her brother since yesterday. She said he hadn't shown up yet, but he had been known to disappear a few times before, so she wasn't entirely worried. She just wanted to save herself from him popping out of a cupboard to surprise her. Before I left, though, she mentioned him leaving notes when he left unannounced before, so he might have been in a hurry this time, I suppose. I still had a little time left before sundown, so I went out to Zakora's to tell her that her suggestion worked perfectly for the tea, and we even got to make some before I had to leave. Hers tasted a little better than mine, but that's probably because she had fresher ingredients. And of course, when I got home, Spike was fast asleep on the stairs with a broom. I really hope he'll learn his limits someday. Though that will probably take a while. They thought they were deserters, that they wanted a vacation. The vacation started when they left, and they will come back. Research Material for Spell Combination and Augmentation April 4th 115 Spells for Practical Use by Shooting Star Contains some more basic spells that should be safer and easier to modify and combine? We'll probably only use it for basic reference material and to come up with a few basic ideas before I actually try anything. 
Weaving Spells, The Art of Making New Magic by Silver Streak. A good basic guide on how spell augmentation came about and how to do it safely. Should be a good source from when I get started to when I finish. Battle Casting and Magical Self-Defense by Stalwart Bulwark. Only really useful for a few sections on how to combine spells on the fly. The rest of it might be useful for a few other abstract subjects, so I'll keep it in mind. Cooking with Magic by Amethyst. Despite the rather misleading title, it's actually a pretty good guide on the basics of how to combine spells. Should be helpful for getting started. Blue and Yellow Make Anything, an advanced guide to combining spells by Brazen Hoof. A more advanced book on the subject of using spells together, but it does explain how to build on the basics in more varied ways, so it's a natural step from cooking with magic. Overall, these should help me get caught up on all my research this weekend. April 6th. Rarity asked for some help with picking out some new fabrics today. I didn't think I would be of much help, but Spike was rather insistent on going and bringing him with me. And I didn't have much plan today, so I figured it was better than lazing around the library all day. The trip to the market was fairly uneventful, except that Rarity was eavesdropping on a few ponies making gossip. I probably shouldn't talk, though, since I couldn't help myself either. Mostly because the conversation was, uh, a little peculiar. Juniper was talking to Meadow Blossom about Thunderlane. I think it had something to do with him running off with Cloud Chaser, because they hadn't shown up for morning weather duty. I know it's probably nothing to be worried about, but it just seems too coincidental that three ponies would be gone unannounced in the same week. I'm sure they'll turn up soon, though. Preliminary Spell Augmentation and Combination Experiments April 7th Light Spell A basic spell for causing luminescence at the tip of the caster's horn. Alteration number one. Increased focus slash input. Strength of the spell is linearly proportional to the amount of focus used by the caster at the cost of a more draining cast. Alteration number two. Change in focus after cast. By focusing enough on a point, the light source can be moved from the caster's horn. This focus is not too much of an additional strain, but once the spell is ended, any additionally casted light spells will begin at the caster's horn again. Combination number one, longevity spell. Once the light spell has been moved from the caster's horn, they can cast a longevity spell on it. This locks the light source in place and at the original intensity for a period determined by how much energy was put into the longevity spell. If the input is linearly proportional to the period for which the light will remain active, it would be most likely to last two hours at the most. Combination number two, longevity spell and movement spell. No amount of force put into moving the light source once it is kept active seems capable of moving it, nor was any physical atti- There was a scream outside earlier, just a few hours after sundown, when I was doing my research. Practically every pony that was still awake was outside trying to figure out where it came from. The cakes were asking if anyone had seen Lily or Daisy, because they'd just left Sugar Cube Corner after making an order. I tried to look for them in the crowd, but they weren't there. That's when Jelly started shouting about her brother and rumble about Thunder Lane being missing, and that no one had seen Cloud Chaser either. Before too long, everyone was arguing and shouting at each other. Luckily, the mayor showed up to calm everyone down, and she said there would be a meeting tomorrow morning at the town hall. It's late. I should get to sleep. April 8th. The meeting went better than I expected it to go. Thankfully, everyone was more composed than last night. The mayor assured every pony that the police were already investigating the disappearances, but several ponies were still concerned about safety. The mayor said police would be out on the streets at night, but until they know what's going on, she asked that everyone stay inside after sundown. Whoever is behind all this, I hope they're caught soon and that every pony who's gone missing is safe. This page was removed from the journal and found folded between the pages. There is no evidence that it was removed from the same place it was tucked into in the journal. 
It is wrinkled, as if it were crumpled up before being flattened out and folded again. The writing is print, rather than the cursive found previously. I'm in an alleyway, and the buildings look like Canterlot. It's dark and cold, but there's a candle a few feet down the alley. I can't tell if it's into or out of the alley, but I walk toward it. I feel warm as I step into its glow and secure in the safety it brings. The candle flickers and its wax melts as minutes pass by and then hours and then days, but they feel like they pass in seconds. I, I look around and, and the alley is gone, but the candle still remains. My friends step into the light staring at me, but they aren't alone. My family, my teachers, and practically every pony I have ever known is there just smiling at me. They start singing, but I, I can't hear it. They begin to disappear in the blink of an eye, one by one, until only my friends are left. Dash and Applejack fade together, and then Fluttershy vanishes, a frown on her face. Pinky and Rarity are still there with Spike smiling, but they just drift away like the candle and I are moving away from them. The last thing I see is a face, barely illuminated by the candlelight. It's, it stares at me, frowning as if it's upset. Its lips part, and it it blows out the candle, smiling as the light fades. It's it's cold again, and I'm alone. But they will come back again and spread to everything just like... Uh... April 10th. The police are still investigating, but I think another pony went missing last night. No one seems to want to talk about it, but Pinky said she overheard some of the police talking while she was making a delivery for the cakes. They didn't say who it was, but they were talking about an animal for some reason. As if some wild creature would kidnap half a dozen ponies in the dark. I tried asking her if she was playing some prank with Spike with his entry, but they both said they didn't know anything about it. I can't let all of this happen without doing something, so I'm writing to Princess Celestia. It might not help a lot, but maybe having more ponies helping, or at least some more security, would do some good. I don't want to have to hear about this anymore, or to see everyone so worried and frightened. April 11th. I didn't hear back from the princess today, but at least there was no bad news today. Some ponies were even starting to walk around the town again during the day. I don't know if everyone thinks it's safe or if they just want to stay brave, but it's good to have things feel... normal. I took the chance to go and check on every pony. Applejack is holding up alright. She said they managed to finish all of their seeding and that all their ruckus hasn't hampered their plans for the harvest. She wasn't sure what was going on, but had faith that whoever was behind it would be brought to justice. Rainbow Dash was fine too, and was boasting about how she'd be ready to fight if anyone tried to take her hostage. Pinky didn't seem shaken by things at all, but she was worried if every pony had disappeared was still safe. She's been making deliveries for the cakes because some ponies are too frightened to leave their houses, but they seem more concerned than her than she is for herself. Fluttershy was still at her cottage but she was more shaken than I'd expected her to be. She said she was having trouble sleeping and that she always felt uneasy when she was alone. Rarity was stopping by to check on her too, and she seemed calm and collected, at least around Fluttershy. Rarity offered to let her stay at the boutique, but Fluttershy didn't want to leave all the animals behind. It took a bit of convincing from the both of us, but she packed up her things as long as Rarity didn't mind her taking some sick animals with her. It was getting late, but I didn't want to head home without checking on Zakora. I found my way out to her hut, but the lights were off and the door was locked. I wanted to look around for her, but it was getting dark. I wasn't really worried about being attacked or kidnapped, but I just felt uneasy in the dark. I hurried home as quickly as I could. I hope Zakora is all right. April 12th. I got a letter from the princess just after sundown. She apologized for not replying sooner, that she was tied up with royal business, but she promised to send someone down in the morning. No word on if there were any disappearances, but even if there were, I'm sure the mayor is making the police stay quiet. 
maybe it is some kind of animal. I mean, there's no way any pony could avoid capture for so long all on their own. Whoever, or whatever it is, I'm sure the guards will keep everyone safe. April 13th. The investigators arrived from Canterlot this morning. There were three of them, and a dozen guards, too. I don't know if the guards were there to help or just to keep the investigators safe, but they were needed for the latter. Reporters were asking them questions and ponies pleading for the safe return of their family. Within a few hours, they were calling for a meeting at Town Hall. They were taking volunteers to help keep the streets safe at night because the princess was more concerned with safety than finding out what had happened. I was a little surprised that so many hooves were in the air, considering how many ponies were afraid when all this started and how many sounded upset. Rainbow Dash, Applejack, and Big Macintosh were among them. I didn't know what I could do, but I had to do something, so I volunteered too. Pinky, Rarity, and Fluttershy are staying here at the library with Spike, and it's a few minutes until sundown. It should be a lot less likely that something bad will happen with all this security. April 14th. It was uneventful until midnight. I was with Applejack and Rainbow Dash, along with one of the investigators from Canterlot named Sugarcane. I was trying to get something out of him, about what's going on with the investigation or if they had any leads about who or what was behind it, but he didn't want to talk much. Applejack and Dash tried to assure me that things would be all right and to trust in the investigators, but I wasn't convinced. That's when a scream came from a few streets away. We rushed toward it as quickly as we could and arrived at the same time as two other patrols. There was only one guard a broken lantern, and no sign of the others that were with him. He didn't even seem injured, just frozen in fear. Sugarcane and the other investigators were asking him what happened while one of the other guards rushed off toward the hospital. Everyone that had stayed inside was turning on their lights and trying to get a look outside to find out what had happened. The guards tried to keep curious ponies away and tell them to go back to bed, but the guard that was attacked just started rambling. He said they saw something, just in the dark of an alleyway. It didn't look anything like a pony, and it was staring at them for a few moments while another guard with their lantern moved closer. He said it screeched so loudly that his ears were ringing, and it sounded like a train screeching to a halt, and it lunged out of the alleyway at them, knocking the lantern away. He said... The others were gone in a moment, before they could even scream. And then it just sat there, staring at him. He just kept shaking and screaming about hearing it whisper to him. A few nurses from the hospital arrived, and they took the guard off. The investigators were talking in private, trying to decide what to do, but they eventually told everyone to go back to their homes. I offered to let Dash and Applejack stay at the library with the others and I, but Applejack said she'd be fine at Sweet Apple Acres, and Dash insisted she was fine on her own, even though I could tell she was a little spooked. I don't know if I should keep writing about this, but if all this stops, someone has to know, just in case whatever it is happens again. April 15th. Practically everyone is confined to their houses now, except for a few hours. The police want to keep every pony safe, if not from this thing, then at least from each other, and they're setting up lights to cover the streets during the night. I guess they think that because it knocked a lantern away, it must not like the light. It's not too far-fetched an idea. Spike and I have been looking for any books that might have anything to do with creatures, myths, or legends, but it's starting to get late, especially considering I didn't get any sleep last night. I got to pick up a few lanterns, oil, candles, and some food from Rarity, Pinkie Pie, and Fluttershy's places. We all agreed it would be best if we stayed here together. Maybe in the morning I'll have a chance to look into this. The validity of any further entries is still under question. 
While the writing is the same style as previous entries, and there is no belief that they were written by anyone but Miss Sparkle, the contents are viewed as unlikely to have occurred, and counteract several facts about the dates listed. Please consider this with any further reading. There are several faint watermarks on this page, and several that follow. April 16th. I can't even believe what I'm writing. Or that this is even real still. Spike woke me up this morning while it was still dark. I wasn't really thinking why the lights that had been shining through the window last night weren't still on, but I asked him what was going on. He was a little shaken trying to speak while he held up a clock. It was ten in the morning, or at least ten on the clock. It just couldn't be possible. I had to double check, triple check even, with the other clocks in the library, and they were all the same. I looked outside, and the sky was dark. No sun, no clouds, not even any stars or the moon. It was just black. The window was frosted, but it was warm to the touch. I wrote to Princess Celestia to see if something was wrong, but when I gave Spike the parchment, it just burned into ash. I asked Spike if he'd done it right, but he said it was the same thing he always did. I tried it again, but it did the same thing. I had no idea what was going on, and I still don't. It just... it doesn't seem possible. I told the others after trying to come to grips with it. Rarity and Pinkie Pie were shocked, but... But Fluttershy took it the worst. She was even more frightened than she'd already been. But we did our best to calm her down. She's still worried about all the critters back at her cottage, if they're safe, and if Applejack and Rainbow Dash are too. I pray that they are, but there's no way to know for sure right now. We just have to hope for the best. I didn't see any pony out on the streets during the... day. But there were lights on in the houses and silhouettes in the windows, so at least everyone seems alright for now. I could even see a few brighter lights in the direction of Sweet Apple Acres in the town hall. But past that, there was nothing. No canter lot in the distance, or any other lights. Even stranger was that anywhere dark inside was cold, but, but not in any way that I could feel on my skin. It was like my bones were freezing, and it seeped out into the rest of my body. The second I set up a candle or lantern, though, it was fine. I have them set up around the library, and we have enough extras to last a little while, at least. Maybe we can find out something here, where it's safe for now. Just the fact that it's dark would be enough, but with the unnatural cold and the fact that Spike can't send anything to the princess... I'm worried... I'm scared, and I just want an explanation. We looked through a dozen books, but there wasn't anything about some creature that can do this. Maybe tomorrow. For now, the doors and windows are locked. It should be enough. There is a rather large ink blot at the end of the E stroke. Breaking down slowly like all the others. I'm still here because I listened. If only they had two. April 17th. Nothing substantial today. I read through Equestrian Wildlife, Two-Headed Mythological Mysteries, Medieval Pony Folklore, and Factual Legends. Nothing anywhere related to this, even a little. A few lights turned off across the way. I hope they just tried to get somewhere else with others. The town hall and Sweet Apple Acres are still the brightest. Maybe there are some others at the farm with Applejack? If there are any, they'd certainly be safe with her. To make all of it worse, Fluttershy came down with a fever this morning. Luckily, Rarity and Pinky kept her in bed for the rest of the day and helped take care of her. I just wish they didn't look just as bad. But who am I to talk? I've barely slept since the night I was on patrol, and every second that I'm awake is spent doing research. What do I even have to show for that? No clues, no leads, not even the faintest idea what is happening or making it happen. 
Rarity, Pinky, and Spike have been spending their time talking and trying to relax. They sound so happy, considering everything is happening. Maybe they have the right idea. I should take a break before bed anyway. April 18th. Fluttershy's fever seems better today, and I figured we should set up shifts to make sure everyone gets enough sleep and that nothing gets in. Fluttershy wants to help, but we told her everything should be fine without her. We'll stay awake like we normally do, and spend about three hours each keeping watch just in case. I volunteered to go first, just so I can keep up my research. I started going through any more legend and myth books I could find around the library, but things are starting to run dry, and I don't have many other sources. Pinky suggested looking in something like ghosts, goblins, and ghoulish figures. I don't think looking in a book about ghost stories is going to help, but it's kind of frightening to think that it's the closest to what's actually happening. Maybe I will give it a look before I head to bed. We took some time to talk about our families. Rarity says Sweetie Belle is with her parents, but she's worried because she can't see their house from the library. Pinky was more concerned about the cakes than our own relatives. She hopes they're far enough away from here that they aren't in any danger. I don't even know if the rest of Equestria is experiencing this too. Canterlot would be the safest place no matter what's happening. I'm sure Mom and Dad are safe there with shining armor. I just hope the reason the letters weren't being sent isn't that the princess is hurt. I think another light or two is going out. I hope it's just ponies trying to stay together instead of separated. Maybe I could try and get down to Sweet Apple Acres to see if Applejack and any of the others are alright. Though getting to Town Hall might be easier considering how close it is. That's all for later, though. I need to focus now. This page is torn from the top right to the bottom left. It does not seem that whoever did so is trying to remove any specific information. The words along the tear are tentatively filled in, based on partial letters along the tear. April 19th. The watch went fine last night, and everyone is feeling a bit better now getting some actual sleep. I think I finally found something from ghosts, goblins, and ghoulish figures, too. Two. Took a bit of searching, but I found something that seems to match what's happen happening. A little bit. There is a legend from Northern Equestria, back from when the Ever... Everfree. Discovered. Some foresters and explorers were supposedly seeing... Odd. Odd. Forest. They called them shadow walkers because they would only... Only? Corner of someone's eye. I know it isn't a lot to go on, and the legend isn't... Detailed? How they do it, but it fits at least a little. Maybe there's... That would help give me more insight into it, but the... Who? Who? Scary stories, more than anything concrete... Either, either kept the page marked along with any others. In case it gets unmarked, it's page four, six, six or eight. Any other, other numbers are unknown. Questioning where they come from and what they are, she was misbehaving like a whiny child that wants to know why she's being given candy. If she listened, she would know. I stole what they learned, but gave them something in return. Five pages afterwards are ripped from the journal as well, but another folded page was found in between the pages. This page was not wrinkled like the previous one, but its writing is in print like the previous inserted page, and the tears along its side matches the first of the removed pages. The same as before, what little I can remember. The alleyway, the candle, but no one came this time. I sat there for hours, watching it flicker in the wax melt and slide down its side. I, I felt watched, and I could hear them whispering about me. How long will she last? How much will it take? Will they ever learn? Should they? Could they? Do 
that I even deserve to, I take a deep breath and slowly blow out the candle. The face is there again, and I can see its eyes staring at me, but they're empty, hollow, and black. It smiles as if it's saying that I did the right thing. I feel cold, but it fades as the shadows envelop and shelter me. They are welcoming and warm, and I finally give in at peace with my mistakes. I'll probably forget again. Why am I remembering now? She never remembers because it was painful, illogical, unacceptable. She couldn't leave him behind. Willie isn't her talent, but she clings to it like a lifesaver. Maybe because the other was missing, or maybe because she trusted them. She made a mistake trusting me, but I was not with them in the end. April 21st. Fluttershy broke a lamp earlier. I don't know how it happened, but the rest of us rushed over with some light. She was shivering, probably from the cold, and just staring out the window. It took a bit of work, but we managed to get her attention. She looked a little pale and feverish, so Rarity took her back upstairs to get some medicine and rest. Pinky is still trying to act normal, but I think Rarity is slipping. Earlier, I saw her crying in the corner. When I asked her about it, she said it was nothing, but I can tell she's worried. Probably about her family, or Applejack and Rainbow Dash. Not surprisingly, Spike has been spending a lot of time with her. Whenever he talks to me, he sounds so frightened, but every time he's been talking to her, he tries his hardest to act brave. I never expected something like this to make him so much more mature. I know it sounds silly, but I'm proud of him. I know for certain now that the lights are turning off, but the town hall and Sweet Apple Acres are still lit in the distance. I'm thinking about trying to get to Sweet Apple Acres to talk with Applejack if she's still there. I could teleport from house to house to stay in the light, but I don't want to leave every pony else here, especially if Fluttershy starts getting worse again. They might not even be there. I'll ask Rarity and Pinky what they think tomorrow. For now, I need to stay focused for the watch. I've been rereading battle casting and magical self-defense, just in case it comes to that. Maybe it would help me feel like I have some more control. April 22nd. I talked to Rarity, Spike, and Pinky about heading to Sweet Apple Acres. They were a bit more indecisive than I thought they'd be. Pinky and Spike really want me to stay, but Rarity thinks it's the only way we can try and move forward, and I think so too. I told them I'd wait a day or two to think it over some more, but it will have to be soon, or there won't be many lights left. Fluttershy was up and about again, thankfully. I saw her looking out of the window, I think toward her cottage. I asked her if she was okay, and she said she was fine, but that she was worried about them. I assumed she meant the other ponies or the critters back at her cottage, so I told her they were safe. I guess it gave her some comfort, because she smiled. I don't really know if she believes it or not. <laughs> I don't even know if I do. Pinky asked for our help earlier with something. I wasn't really sure what to expect, but she pulled out a few cupcakes and birthday candles she brought with her. She said it was Junebug's birthday today, and she was going to throw a party for her before everything happened, but she didn't exactly have the decorations for it now. She said it probably wasn't worth much, but that we should wish her a happy birthday, even if she wasn't here. I didn't really know what to say, but Pinky had a point. Just because we weren't all together doesn't mean we should forget about them, no matter how dire things are. The cupcakes were good, too. Too blind to see reality. Too deaf to hear their wisdom. Too mute to speak her truth. Too numb to feel. Fear. Joy. Pain, love, sorrow, courage, hatred, accepted. 
April 23rd. I've been getting ready to head out today. Rarity and Pinky helped me mark a few houses that were still lit on a map of the town, and I think I have a good path from here to the orchard set up. It's going to be a two-day trip. One to get there, rest and talk to the others, and one to get back. If everything goes according to plan, we can start working together on a way out of all this. Maybe I'll find someone on the way there. A new face or any other sign of life will be assuring at this point. Pinky gave me a few of the cupcakes she had left, just in case I do find anyone. She said it would make them feel happier to see a friendly face in a cupcake instead of just a friendly face. Fluttershy asked me to keep an eye open for any of her critters and to tell them that she's safe. Spike didn't say it in front of Rarity, but he still didn't want me to go, or at least go without him. I told him that I'd be safe on my own, and I promised to come back. It was hard not to cry when he started, but I told him to be strong for Rarity, Pinky, and Fluttershy. I know he promised, but I'm still worried. I hope everything will be alright. April 24th. First three houses down. Seems like the route is working so far, but no sign of anyone. No clues of where anyone that might have been here went, but there are supplies scattered all over the place. Maybe I can pick some up on the way home. Another two houses down. One had the doors barricaded, leading outside into a closet. Didn't want to take the time to break them down, but I could have sworn I heard something. It sounded like whispers, but it's probably the wind of my imagination. I need to stay focused. Just over halfway there. Still no one. Some of the recent houses were picked clean, though, so maybe everyone left and headed to Town Hall or Sweet App Lakers. I hope they made it if they did. Only a few more houses to go. Ugh. I'm almost there, but the house before this was unsettling. The door was broken down when I got there, and the lights were flickering. It felt odd, fluctuating between cold and warm so quickly. I felt watched, and I got out as quickly as I could. I'll try to skip that one on the way back. It's empty. It's empty. April 25th. They took some of the lights from the streets back in Ponyville and had them set up all around the orchard. I thought I didn't see anyone immediately because they were all inside, but I looked everywhere. There's no notes left behind that they left to go somewhere, but I did find a book out on one of the counters with a quill next to it. It looks like a journal on crop rotations and planting in the orchard. I started reading the journal. It looks like Applejack and the others were coming to the same conclusions, and Rainbow Dash was here too. I looked around again, and... I think... There are graves here, where the soil is freshly moved. They're marked with shovels. There aren't any names. After finishing, I buried the journal. And not just to get it out of my mind. No one should have to see what was in that book. I'll head back to the library after some rest. She had many sins. Ignoring their signs. Forgetting their warnings. Fighting their will. Ignoring makes them louder. Forgetting makes them angrier. Fighting makes it hurt. April 26th. I got back earlier today and picked up a few things on the way back. Food, lantern oil, some candles, ink, etc. I really didn't expect what I returned to. Pinky, Rarity, and Spike were waiting for me, and they all looked worried, even after they greeted me so happily. I asked them what was wrong. That's when they showed me Fluttershy. They tied her up. I asked what happened, 
and Rarity said she found Fluttershy staring out a window again, talking to herself. Rarity tried to talk to her, but she was dismissive and said they are more important. Rarity just assumed that she was still shaken up about all the critters she left behind. But then she started spending all of her time at the window, muttering to herself. Then Rarity found her awake in the middle of the night, standing at the door. Rarity said she was trying to open it. Rarity and Pinky stopped her and tied her up. She was screaming at them and fighting them. They said she didn't even sound like herself anymore. I think everyone is losing their steam, especially after the news I brought back. Pinky still thinks they're safe somewhere, but I'm, I'm just not sure. Fluttershy is still yelling about how it isn't fair, how we're keeping her from them, how they chose her and wanted her to come to them, and that what they had shown her was beautiful. Maybe those whispers I heard were real, and they're louder for her. Maybe they're trying to tempt us all to come out. I won't let it happen. I won't let it end like this. I have to find some way out. April 27th. Fluttershy hasn't stopped talking for about 15 hours now. I'm trying to focus on research, but I'm running out of leads. All the information I found before just isn't adding up to any way out of this, and I don't even know if I could defend everyone or even just myself from what's out there. Rarity was trying to keep herself occupied. She found an old sewing machine that was in the basement and just started breaking apart the curtains and some of her other dresses to make something new. She's just running herself ragged to try and forget everything else. Pinky tried to keep Spike away from Fluttershy as much as she could. She could tell he was a little unsettled by her. He's trying so hard to stay brave even after all of this. I think... I'm hearing the whispers again. When I stop reading or writing, they're definitely there. But they're so quiet. Maybe it's just the wind, or paranoia getting to me. Maybe I'm just fooling myself. I'm getting weird dreams, too. And they're like the ones I thought were pranks before. Did I really forget them? How is that even possible? I pulled one out of the trash, since it luckily wasn't thrown out yet, and it's all just too uncanny. Maybe Fluttershy saw them, like the guard. Maybe that's why she can hear them. I just wish she would be quiet so that I could rest for just a bit. We tried gagging her, but she just kept fighting. She bit Spike! I don't even think she's really her, just because that can't be her. How could her body twist like that? The writing becomes sloppy for the remaining lines. I just have to stay awake. Only until Rarity is ready. I have to stay focused. I have to stay Awake. I won't let this end. I won't give up. I won't lose them. I won't. 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 April 28th. Fluttershy is gone. I don't know how, but she's nowhere to be found. No windows are unlocked, and the doors aren't unbarred. She just... vanished. She took some of the pages from my notebook about the research I found. I can barely even remember where I found it from, and now it's gone. The whispers are louder now, and everyone else is hearing them too. I feel like we're being watched. Like there are eyes just outside the window. I keep seeing shadows out the corner of my eye, and the wind rapping against the door is getting stronger. 
Rarity hasn't stopped sewing since she woke up. Pinky keeps trying to tell jokes, and Spike is trying his best to laugh without crying. I'm trying to remember, and I just... can't. I want to say something, but... what can I say? I just wish this was a dream, and that I could wake up in my bed with the sun shining on my face, but every time I sleep, it's that nightmare. That alley. That candle. That face. It's taunting me with that blank stare and that smile. It wants me to give in. But I won't. It wants to break me, but I'm stronger than that. I have my friends still. I have hope still. I have hope. Hope. April 29th. It's getting so hard to keep my eyes open. I'm worried that if I sleep, she'll come back and let them in. We're all worried. Some of the whispers are different. There are friends and, and family. Some are angry, and others are caring. Maybe they're running out of ideas. Maybe they'll give up soon. I have to keep writing. I can't fall asleep. Rarity is crying about her parents and Sweetie Belle. They keep calling out to her. They say they miss her and she wants to go to them. I keep telling her it isn't them. I can hear my parents, too. I want to believe it isn't them. But they sound so real. Pinky is quiet and calm. Maybe she knows what's coming. Maybe she did the smart thing and gave up. I can hear her praying. I didn't know she prayed. Spike can barely speak. He keeps clutching at me. I try to comfort him, but it seems so pointless. The whispers aren't whispers anymore. The wind isn't the wind anymore. I can't fall asleep. I can't close my eyes. I can't let it end. Not like this. The writing becomes long, and a final quill stroke falls to the bottom of the page. I can't give up. This is the last written page of the journal. It is entirely in print. No other markings are found on future pages. I blinked, and Pinky was gone. Rarity started to yell about eyes watching her, and the screams. I couldn't hear them. She cried. She wanted me to make it stop. I can't. She wanted to wake up. I want to, too. Spike wouldn't say a word. I felt so cold, even with the light and Spike clutching me tight. The lanterns started to go out. I closed my eyes to form a light on my horn, and Rarity wasn't there anymore when I opened them. It was quiet again. I did my best to comfort Spike. It felt so easy with the whispers gone. It was so easy to push him away, into the dark. I had tried everything, and it was worthless. I struggled and the chains became tighter. I tried to forget it and it just kept coming back. Why did I hope when there was none to begin with? The light is starting to flicker now. I can't tell if I'm giving in or just losing strength. The face is there, at the edge of the light. There... there are a lot of them. They're all the same. They're smiling. They look so happy. 
I want to be happy too. I can't keep fighting it. It's the truth, right? The end? No. The beginning? Yes. They're beginning. To a better path. If you could only see, you'd know. This is what she meant. It's so beautiful. I'm ready. It's the only choice I have left. All else failed. Case Report. Summary of Events. Submitted by Britton Vines. Location, Ponyville. Case, Ponyville Mass Disappearance. Classification, Top Secret. To whom it may concern, what follows is an update on the status of the investigation into the disappearance of the entire citizenship of Ponyville. Since the discovery of the state of the town on April 16th, a full detachment of investigators has been relocated to the town. In addition, the advisor called Raven, representing Her Majesty Princess Celestia, remains on site and continues to offer as much aid as she can with our attempts at research. Since our arrival, several key updates have taken place. We have finished filling out the requisition forms for the remaining three of 16 shipments from the Canterlot Archives. Once the final shipment arrives, we should have all possible relevant material available to our investigations. This also leads to the contents of the book Miss Sparkle mentioned in her journal entries, ghosts, goblins, and ghoulish figures, which seemed to contain information on the Shadow Walkers that she believed could be responsible. After a bit of searching, we discovered that the book did indeed contain an entry on the myths surrounding these creatures, and it is included as Supplement A attached to this report. Our main efforts remain divided on three fronts. The first is the quarantine of the area. Several guards and agents working in shifts have been dispatched at the major roadways leading into Ponyville and the skies surrounding it. Access to the town has been restricted under the pretense of a viral outbreak, though the reason offered may need to be modified the longer the investigation continues privately. This also includes the restriction of mail intended for Ponyville, which is currently being held by all postal officials, and unfortunately, barring entrance to residents who are away during the events. The second is a nationwide attempt to bar access and information until the disappearance is made public. Railways have been rerouted to pass far around the town, and scheduled weather is being held in Cloudsdale, under the quarantine pretense. In addition, agents in various major cities are seeding information about the fabricated events in the town. Lastly, our investigation within the town continues in full force. As stated before, the Princess's advisor and some of the investigators are combing through every book available from the Canterlot Archives to search for relevant information. This search has not brought much more to our attention, but the final shipments may shed some light. While there are still searches throughout the town to find additional logs, we are retaining the curfew of one hour before sunset and mandatory check-in and check-outs for all personnel, just in case any similar events begin to happen. However, the bulk of our search remains at Sweet Apple Acres. There were no fresh plots of soil we could find beyond the graves mentioned by Miss Sparkle, which were found to be empty after attempting to exhume the bodies there, and random digging or searches for any kind of marked spots turned up nothing else, until we searched the cellar at the edge of the property. It was not included in the original search due to its distance from the farmhouse and barn, as well as a lack of any light setup nearby that might have indicated it had been occupied. On first inspection, the cellar appeared to have been for the storage of seeds and farming equipment not regularly used, which were found instead in the barn. It is fairly small, roughly 10 feet by 20 feet, with a roof 6 feet tall, and the walls and floor are dirt, with a series of wooden supports for the structure. While taking stock of the items located inside, one of the investigators noticed an indentation where a trio of barrels were located, which seemed to indicate that one had been used. We dug into the wall near that location, and after an hour of searching, we found the journal, wrapped in heavy cloth. A transcription of the journal is being copied now, and will be included in this letter. My chief investigator, White Clover, will continue searching for any relevant clues until further instructions are given. Sincerely, Verdant Vines, Head of Investigation Unit, Case number 3467. Supplement A. Excerpt from Ghosts, Goblins, and Ghoulish Figures. 
Shadow Walkers, believed origination 386 AC. From shadows they come, and light they will run. Their screech means hide till you see the sun. The tale of Shadow Walkers originated in the northern provinces of Equestria near the once vast Blue Blossom Breaks. At its peak, the Blue Blossom Breaks was a major center of naturally occurring herbs, and many nearby towns, particularly Mustang Marches, thrived from harvesting and selling either the herbs or concoctions made from them. As such, many of the ponies there worked within the woods, some into the dark of night. As such, it was only natural that campfire stories and warnings of danger would arise about something living within the woods. The tale would often go as follows. Several years ago, there was a pony who wandered into the Blue Blossom Breaks as the sun was setting in the sky. He was in search of a grave, rumored to hold dozens of herbs in abundance, but he worried that a search in the day would risk some passerby following him and challenging his claim to the grove. Thus, with his lantern and a half-full pack of provisions, he ventured into the woods alone. For the first hour, he kept on the path, sure to mark a map in his satchel to lead him back once his search was done. It was after the first hour that he began to feel unsettled. He heard twigs cracking and leaves crumpling in the woods around him, but when he turned to look towards them, he saw nothing. He dismissed the noises as critters, unconcerned with him, and pressed on. After the second hour, the noises had ceased, and he took a moment to rest. As he ate, in the warmth of a small fire, he heard a screech like that of an owl. He tried to ignore it until he heard another and another. With each screech, the noise became louder and louder, until it sounded like it was only a few feet away. He hid within the fire's light, feeling a shiver of fear run up his spine, but after minutes of waiting, he heard and saw nothing. Carefully, the pony extinguished the fire and continued on his way. With every dozen steps he made deeper into the woods, the pony's eyes darted from side to side, glancing at the barely lit brush and trees within his eyesight. Every minute or so, he would see some faint silhouette in the corner of his eye, but as he turned towards it, there was nothing. His pace quickened with each step until he was galloping through the woods, not in search of the grove, but in search of escape. He fled in every direction he knew should lead him to the forest's edge for what seemed like hours, but there was nothing except the endless forest. Before long, he was exhausted, and his galloping grew to a trot, and then to a crawl. The screeching began again, slowly coming closer and closer, accompanied by a strong wind that caused his lantern to flicker. The last thing he saw was the faint image of a four-legged beast at the edge of his lantern's light before its flickering light went out. The myth still lives on as a campfire story in the northern parts of Equestria today, and while the Blue Blossom Breaks are not the bustling center of herb harvesting that they once were, rumors of mysterious noises within the forest deter any would-be harvesters to this day. The following is a transcript of the journal found in the wall of a cellar at Sweet Apple Acres. The book itself is thick, case-bound, and bears the words, Sweet Apple Acres Crop Rotation, Spring 83 to blank, on the cover. There are several dried bloodstains along the spine and back cover of the book, but no bloodstains were found on the property. The farm itself was found with several lights hung in the orchard around the farmhouse and barn, half of which had been broken, and the remainder of which were deprived of power. Both the farmhouse and barn had been stocked with supplies similar to the library where Twilight Sparkle's journal was discovered. Behind the farmhouse, three plots of soil, identified by Twilight Sparkle's journal as fresh graves, were discovered, but they were found to be empty upon exhuming. The first 287 pages of the journal cover information about the usage and yields of the orchards at Sweet Apple Acres over the past few years. This information is extremely detailed, and was searched for any important notes or writing, but none were found. The following dozen pages are blank, and then the book was used as a journal by Applejack. 
a member of the Apple family who lived on the farm. As with Miss Sparkle's journal, the validity of the events recorded here are under question, and they conflict with the account of the journal of Miss Raven Inkwell found at the town's library. April 18th. Well, I don't really know what to write, honestly. It's been two days since the sun didn't come up. I figured I could start keeping a journal to keep myself occupied and get my mind off everything going on. And this was the only thing we really had on hoof. Apple Bloom's still shaking up, wondering if Scootaloo and Sweetie Belle are alright. We're all doing our best to keep her calm, but... I know the worrying is starting to get to all of us. So far, Granny Smith's pulled out the photo albums, her knitting set, and more than one cookbook. And Big Mac? Well, he's much more talkative than usual. Meanwhile, things that make better sense than some campfire story are going on. You can't even step a hoof out of a candlewick's light without getting the chills. The darkness is just unnatural. There's not a light in the sky and the only thing you can see is the town twinkling off in the distance. I keep hoping the girls are all right. Dash is the only one not with Twilight at the library, but I know that girl can take care of herself. The rest, I just hope they'll stay hungered down to wait whatever this is out. For us, we've got all the supplies we should need, and I'm sure this will all blow over soon. Why, I bet Twilight's got a nose in half a dozen books right now, trying to find an answer, and if any pony could figure it out, she can. The margins of this page are filled with several numbers, ranging from 6 to 15. Several are crossed out, or followed by a question mark. On some instances of the numbers 12, 10, and 13 are circled. April 19th. We got a surprise today, to say the least. It was around 1 in the afternoon, according to the clocks at least. Big Mac was helping me move a few more supplies over from the barn, and we saw lights getting closer from the town. I didn't know how to react, really. Granny Smith kept Apple Bloom away from the window and we locked the doors. Next thing we know, there's a dozen ponies marching through the orchard with lanterns, packs, and a couple of those lights they'd brought in from Canterlaw. We were wary of trusting our eyes, but I had Big Mac come out with me to meet him. I recognized a few faces from town, and some of those ponies from Canterlot that arrived on the train, and then I saw Rainbow Dash at the back of the crowd. I was more than a little relieved to see her all right. But then one of the others stepped forward. He said his name was Spanner, and that he was one of the investigators that came into town. He said they'd been holed up in a hotel near the edge of Ponyville, and after some talk and worry, assumed we would have enough supplies to share and space for them to stay. We hadn't really taken full stock yet, but I talked it over with Granny Smith, Big Mac, and even Apple Bloom. We couldn't just turn all of them away, even if we had less than a hoof full of scraps. We spent the next few hours hanging up their lights and getting them running, sorting out supplies, and setting up room for everyone in the barn. From the looks of it, we still have enough food and water for every pony to last us a few weeks, and there's still a few trees close to the farmhouse we can get some food from if we need it. I offered some space in the house for Dash, so the whole barn wasn't packed full, and then we set up a watch rotation on Spanner's recommendation, which Big Mac Dash and I volunteered for again. I'm glad they've got every pony's safety at heart, and I'll be damned if I don't do what I can to help. April 20th It was actually kind of normal on the farm today. We kept our guests occupied out in the barn, telling stories and enjoying some of Granny's cooking. Apple Loom had one of her classmates to talk and play with, even if it wasn't Sweetie Belle or Scootaloo. Dash kept complaining about not being able to stretch her wings beyond Circle in the barn, but we took some time to try and relax together. Even if that was just talking and praying the others were still safe and warm, we can barely see the library from here, and it makes me wish we had a telescope or something to be sure. But it looks lit. I also took some time to talk to Spanner. He came with another investigator, Sugarcane, and three guards, and said the rest of their party had bunked up at Town Hall. He wasn't too worried about him, though. Said they were more than tough enough. I tried to ask him if they had any idea what was happening, or if they were working on a solution, but he wouldn't talk about it. That's probably for the best. 
For now, I just need some sleep. Got an early watch tomorrow that I need to be wide awake for. April 21st. I had a nightmare. It feels like a bad one. Whispers, shadows, running through a dark forest. It was like I was in a ghost story. I just can't seem to remember it all now. Like it's foggy or some memory from a dozen years ago. It was there when I woke up, for just a second, being scared for my life, for my family, with my heart racing a mile a minute. But now, it's just gone. I know it sounds far-fetched, but after I heard some others talking about bad dreams too, I talked to them about it. They didn't seem to remember them clearly either, but maybe it's all just nerves. I mean, Big Mac and Dash didn't seem like they were unsettled, and Apple Bloom looks more chipper than the past few days. Anyway, I didn't end up getting much sleep because of that, but I kept going strong for every pony else's benefit. Something else is still nagging at me, though. I overheard one of the guards talking with Spanner earlier about wanting to do something instead of sitting around. I think they want to try and go to another town to see if it's like this. I know we probably won't let them go through with it, but if they try to, everyone else probably wouldn't react calmly. Hopefully I'm right, and we just stay put. April 22nd. There was a crash behind the barn in the early morning, from where we were keeping some of the crates of supplies. Big Mac and the guards tried to keep everyone calm, while Spanner, Sugarcane, and I rushed back to see what was going on. I was surprised by what we found. We'd hung a couple of lanterns around the barn and farmhouse, and the three of them had been smashed on the ground, luckily without causing a fire. There were splinters of wood from two crates scattered about, and the insides had been picked clean. There weren't any hoof prints in the dirt or claw marks on anything, but that wasn't the strangest thing. The air felt odd, almost dead, and though it wasn't cold, something made my bones shiver, even in the light. It was like the feeling that you were being watched from everywhere, and it took hours for it to really go away. I didn't tell anyone about it, except for Dash later. I guess because I thought it was just a feeling. Anyway, I was a little cautious about coming back to everyone else with news like that, and so were Spanner and Sugarcane. When we got back, they told everyone the crates had been stacked poorly, and unfortunately, everything in them was ruined. It didn't seem like everyone was happy with that answer, but at least getting an answer calmed everyone down. Until one of those guards from yesterday started a ruckus. He'd been off in a corner for most of the time he wasn't on watch, and the next thing I know, he's marching over to Spanner and shouting about twiddling our hooves instead of doing something. Then three other ponies jumped up and complained about the same thing, and then everyone started arguing until Granny Smith managed to quiet them down. <sighs> I can't say it was the most civil discussion I've seen, but it's decided now. Two of them are leaving tomorrow. They're going to head north, towards Trottenham. It's a little less than a day's trot, so whether they actually find it or not, we'll hear back in about two or three days. I don't know what's out there causing this, but I pray they make it back safely. They will, but not as themselves. There are numerous watermarks on this page and the next. April 23rd. The guards set off in the morning, and every pony's been real quiet since. I guess they're all anxious to see them come back, even if it'll be two days at the least. I took Dash aside for a bit to see how she was feeling. She's as chipper and tough as ever, but she wishes she could at least get answers instead of lazing about on the farm all day and night. I'd like some answers, too. But Spanner and Sugarcane don't seem prone to opening up about all this. Maybe Dash and I could try looking for something, but I don't have any idea where to start. Always watching. In fact, I've been thinking about yesterday and the broken boxes behind the barn. If something's out there that's been causing all this, and it just ran up, broke three lanterns, picked two crates clean, and vanished without a trace, could we find it? Could we stop it? I don't think anyone's doubting that whatever it is can't, shouldn't be natural. 
But then, what could it be? I guess the only hope I have now is that Twilight will arrive at the farm with a plan and an answer. Maybe after we see the sun come up. Some part of me knows it's unlikely, but sometimes that's what hopes are for. Just to take your mind off things. I had another nightmare. It was pitch black, but I know I was still at the farm. I could hear something clawing and scratching at the doors and windows, even at the floor. Someone was close, but I couldn't see who. They just kept asking why over and over again. I tried to speak to comfort them, but nothing came out. Then they were gone. There wasn't a scream, the floor didn't give out, nothing grabbed them. They were just gone. It got colder, deep in my bones, and then I heard their voice again. They told me to stop fighting. That's when I woke up. For the next feast. If the other dream was the one I couldn't remember, this is the one that won't go away. I've tried to sleep. But I just hear the scratching again, and then I get cold. I don't want to wake anyone up, but I have to tell someone about it in the morning. Maybe I'll be gone by then, if I'm really lucky. For the fun of it. April 24th. I don't know what to think anymore. The way this all looks just doesn't make sense. Things were quiet until around noon. That's when the guards we'd seen off two days ago showed back up, except it wasn't from the north towards Trottenham. They came from the south. The they were shouting and screaming nonsense as they galloped in. That got our attention before the faint lane or lights. They were out of breath, their gear and manes ragged and dirty. They were mumbling about shadows, trees, and mazes, at least from what I could understand. It took us a while to calm them down, but the only thing we got out of them was a week, and then they were out like a light. We didn't find out what that was until a few hours later, when one of them woke back up. We had moved them into the farmhouse to give them a bit more comfort. I volunteered to keep watch over them, and I called for Spanner when he started to stir. It took a few moments for him to start rambling again, but this time it was clear. He said they headed north toward the woods, but as soon as they got in, the trees never stopped. They doubled back after an hour, but the path was different. Then they started hearing things in the distance and seeing figures out of the corner of their eyes. He said they ran for days, at least a week, but that's impossible. They left here two days ago. Spanner told me not to tell the others, just to not get them worried about feverish ramblings, but my curiosity got the better of me. I talked to Dash, and I asked her how long the sky had been dark before she saw the others coming here, before they got here. She said five days. It's all perspective. You just can't trust your own. April 25th. The nightmares don't want to go away. Every time I close my eyes, to sleep or not, I, I hear the clawn, and I see eyes, I think, but they feel so empty. It's pitch black, but I know they're there, watching. <sighs> Everyone else is still worrying about the guards that came back muttering to themselves and each other. They're definitely improving, but still seem a little shook up. I can still see the library from here, but what if they've been stuck there for weeks longer than us? What if they're gone? I didn't tell anyone else about what I heard yet. I'm sure Spanner wouldn't let me anyway. It's for the best, for their comfort. But what about mine? April 26. The guards were back on their hooves today, at least for a bit, but Spanner wanted them to keep resting. I figured he knows what's best for him. 
but in the meantime, we've had to ask for some others to help with keeping watch. They were willing, but I just wonder if they're able to. I had a better night's sleep than the last few, I suppose. I can still remember the other nightmares, but at least I didn't have one last night. Have to appreciate the little things, I suppose. In fact, I had a dream that felt like a regular old day in Ponyville. Dash was practicing this new trick, Rarity had some new dresses to show off, and Twilight kept rambling about this rare tome she got shipped in from Canterlot. It really felt like all this had just been some fever dream until I woke up. I know this will be over soon. It just feels like it. It will. In screams. In submission. Or in both. This page is covered in several water stains. April 27th. It all happened so fast. Dash and I were keeping watch, a little late into the night, with two others. Everyone else was either asleep or relaxing in the barn. And then we heard a scream. It came from over by the farmhouse, where one of the others was patrolling. We ran over as fast as we could, while Big Mac kept everyone else huddled in the barn. When we got there, his lantern was broken, and we could only see him at the edge of our own. He was clawing at the ground, like something was pulling him. And then something black reached out and just swallowed him whole. I tried to run forward to, to help him or, or to see what was doing this. All that was left were the grooves he left in the dirt, stretching out into the dark. By the time Spanner got to us, there was another scream back at the barn. I thought it might have been another one of these things, but when we got back, Big Mac was trying to restrain one of the ponies. His coat was stained with this black sort of soot, or something, and it looked like it was spreading. He was shouting for us to let it in and give up, and one of the others was on the ground, trying to nurse a wound. Spanner was quicker than me. He ran up, kicked him in the head, and he was out cold. We tied him up in the corner, helped nurse the other pony's wounds, and then we told Spanner about what happened to the pony on the other side of the farm. I wasn't surprised when he told everyone to grab as many supplies as they could carry and move to the house. But I was when we left that pony tied up in the barn. For now, we just need to stay safe and in the light. I won't let it happen again. The following phrases are written in the margins of the page multiple times. Why didn't I speak up? Why didn't I say anything? Was I afraid? Did I know? Did he deserve the worst? Had I already given in? April 28th. Everyone's been on edge, asking Spanner questions and demanding answers, but he's just like the rest of us. He tried to explain that they're just as in the dark, but promised they would keep everyone safe. It's only the five of them, with two of them resting upstairs, but I trust Spanner wants to do the most he can to protect everyone. The rest of the time, we just kept watch. The lights we left out in the orchard are still up, and even if these things try to knock them down, it will let us know where they are. Maybe that will be enough warning to keep us safe. Meanwhile, Dash is more wound up than before. I had to stop her from flying circles in the living room three times. She was upset for the first time since she got here. That it's all she really has left. I saw one of the lights in town go out. They're so faint from here, but I know I saw it. I don't think it was the library, but... One by one, lights and lies going out. I just want this to be over. I just want everyone to be safe. I just want to see everyone smiling again. We are. This page's writing style is different from the other pages, and the letters RD are written in the top left-hand corner of the page. April 30th. Things went bad yesterday. Those things came back from inside. 
I was with Applejack, Big Mac, and Tarsh, one of the guards, towards the end of our watch. Spanner said the other two guards that had left for a bit would be back on their hooves today, and that they were all right. He came down with sugar cane in them. We let him know that we hadn't seen anything near the orchard, and said our good nights. Applejack and I went to get ready for bed, and she stopped me from flying circles again. She started to try writing in this journal, and I started arguing. But then we heard a thud from downstairs. We ran down as quick as we could. Well, as quick as Applejack could. And we saw one of the guards collapsed at the foot of the stairs. I tried to get close, but Applejack stopped me when she saw blood. Well, at least it seemed like blood, but it was thicker and black. Then his body just started twitching and writhing on the floor, trying to get back up. But it didn't seem like he was awake at all, because his body was still limp. Applejack looked shocked, and I guess I was too. But I pushed him away so that we could get by. I kept an eye on him while Applejack went to find the others. His body just kept twitching, and his coat started turning black. I started backing away before Applejack came back and told me she found the others, holed up by the kitchen. When we got to them, though, their group was smaller than I remembered. The other guard that had relieved us was gone. Spanner said he'd changed, too and the couple that owned the hotel they'd left from wasn't there. We all just kept hunkered down for a while and tried to tend to a colt one of the guards had bitten. He was the one that had been injured in the barn the other day, and he was looking worse by the minute. Things were quiet for a while, and if we hadn't relaxed, we might have been able to stop what happened. We didn't notice the colt's coat changing or that he grabbed a knife from the floor until he grabbed Apple Bloom. We tried to calm him down and keep Applejack from charging him, but he kept saying that it was all hopeless. He started to relax just for a little bit, but we couldn't get Apple Bloom away before he cut her and bit one of her legs. He was gone not long after Big Mac got a hold of him. Applejack and Granny Smith were tending to Apple Bloom. But Sugarcane and Spanner walked up to them. They wanted to cut off her leg. I could already see it starting to turn black. They said they were sure. That there was enough evidence that contact with these things or being injured by them was enough to make you change. They thought if they cut off where it was growing that it would do something. I didn't know what to think. But it didn't sound entirely crazy. At least the way they defended it. But Applejack wouldn't hear of it. We gathered all the supplies we could and moved upstairs, blocking off the staircase. It was quiet for a few hours, but Apple Bloom just kept getting worse. She was feverish, and this black stuff just kept spreading. Slowly. No one seemed to want to say anything with how angry Applejack had gotten. She probably would have just kept saying no. At least until Granny Smith took her aside. I don't know what she said to her, but she was holding back tears when she came back. Spanner grabbed a medical kit and a knife. It was only messy for a moment. Apple Bloom was feeling a lot better a few hours later. Applejack doesn't want to think about what happened, but she still wanted me to write it all down. In case someone else finds this, I can't blame her. I would want to forget if it was my family. This page has the letters A-J in the corner. May 1st. It's hard to think we've been holed up here on the farm for two weeks. And the things keep getting worse. I've been resting since we moved upstairs. But I think I'll be ready to help with the watch again soon. The nightmares haven't come back, but it's still hard to sleep. I can hear what sounds like hoofsteps downstairs, but no one has seen anything come from the stairs. 
I don't have a view of the town from my bedroom window, but maybe I'll take a look tomorrow. Rainbow Dash came to talk with me for a bit before bed and to let me know everyone's doing fine. She's worried about me, I know, even if she wouldn't say it. I know the others are, too. I'm just tired. We all are, aren't we? I want her to ask her if I should have said no, but it's not for me, uh, her, to say. Apple Bloom will be fine. She's safe. We're safe. I just know it. Not for long. I had to wake up in the night to help Granny. Apple Bloom's dressings need changing. She said that she was getting better. Her fever was long gone, and there wasn't any sign of infection. She's really a trooper. I barely even saw her flinch while we did it. She can't move much on her own, but her spirits are holding up all the same. I'm proud. I kept hearing it all night in my dreams. Just a whisper in the dark behind the walls and from downstairs. I couldn't understand it, but it felt angry. It was so silent, but I couldn't ignore it. It was dark, but I could see a shadow. There were screams, I think. They were drowned out by the whispers. It's never gonna leave. But I couldn't make them. May 2nd. The journal was open when I woke up. I didn't write it. I don't even remember waking up before now. And no one else would have written this. Not even Pinky or Dash could be that cold. I felt better after I put it out of my mind. But it didn't stop there. I went to go do my turn at watch, letting Bulwark take a break. But the next thing I know, Dash is telling me to get some rest. I was just looking at the town, the library, the black in the distance, and the time just seemed to fly by. It barely seemed like a few minutes, but then when I saw the clock when I went to my room, it had been hours. I asked Dash if anyone had come to talk to me. She didn't think so, and I don't remember anyone. She must have thought I was crazy. Maybe I'm not as well as I think, but there are so few of us left. I can't just lie around and let everyone else take care of me. I have to keep pulling my weight. I just have to. At least I'm not having the nightmares anymore. May 3rd. It's quiet. That's what Dash said. But she's wrong. Sleeping, the watch, it all just goes by so fast. Except when I hear them and see them. The shadows moving in the black. And the whispers hidden in the silence, they're always there, even when I can't see or hear. I told Dash and Big Mac, they thought I was joking or that my nerves were getting the better of me. I know what I saw and what I heard. It's only quiet because they're waiting and watching. It couldn't just be me, but every wind sounds like howling. Every tap sounds like banging hooves. The creaking sounds like hushed, quiet hoofsteps sneaking up from behind. How can I not treat them like that? I have to be ready. I won't let it happen again. I won't let Apple Bloom get hurt again. The writing on this page is shaky, sporadic, and spaced randomly. It has been compiled with ease of reading in mind. May 3rd... No... no. Fifth? Fourth? I can't remember. I remember writing these things, but not them. Is that how many came? I thought it was this many. I... If I keep writing, I'll remember. It's working, I think. I'm supposed to keep watch. Somewhere. Dash will know. Or Spanner? Is it ever going to come back up? 
is Twilight still there? And the others? She's still trying, I hope, to fix it. Please let her fix it. The others that came. Thirteen? Seven? For now, it's seven in the family. Are the others gone? Changed? Is that what will happen to all of us? Is that why I can't remember? Why can everyone else? The noises and shadows don't stop. They were always there. Even when I didn't notice. I want to make them stop and leave. I keep trying. They want me to. 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 It's not now. Always not. But I have to sleep. Maybe it's all nerves or... Please, let it end. This page is stained with blots of ink and blood, along with several patches of wet parchment. There are still very little signs of bloodshed within the farmhouse that can substantiate this entry. May 5th. I woke up from nightmares. I can remember now, but it was hazy before. I was alone, downstairs. It was dark, but warm. It wasn't like the shadows, like the cold. But there was no light. There were whispers. They kept getting louder and louder, begging me to stop. I heard Mom and Dad, and they were sad and angry, and they just all sounded so angry. I tried to move or run, but I couldn't. The walls started shaking, the windows shattered, and I felt something behind me. I woke up. I just sat there, thinking, trying to understand or ignore it. Then I heard screams. It was Apple Bloom. I, I knew it before I heard it. I jumped to my hooves and ran into the hallway. It was dark. The barricade was gone, and the doors to the other rooms were broken. I saw them. Those things from downstairs. But they were darker. They were swallowing the light. There were three. I, I couldn't see into the room. I called for Apple Bloom and the others, but I only heard the screaming. I think there were whispers, too. I ran at them. I had to help everyone. I, I had to. It seemed to go on forever. I never fought like that, like some gung-ho Mustang. I stopped when Dash pulled me away. The barricade was still there. The doors weren't broken. It was Brad. The screams stopped. Granny. Big Mac. A Apple Bloom. They were... <laughs> Why did I do it? Why couldn't I see? I felt sick and confused and, and, and scared. I just want a reason. I told Dash to leave with the others and as much as they could carry. To find Twilight. I had to yell to make her. They broke a window and ran. That was six hours ago. I hope they made it. I hope. I buried my family and said a few words. I begged them to forgive. I don't deserve it. I should have stopped it or... Mom... Dad, all of my kin now, I'll never see them again. In the dark, waiting, it's what I deserve. The whispering, the whispering won't be ignored. 
It's reaching out. It's still here. It's coming for me. I should just give up. I deserve to... I'm so sorry. Note from Raven Inkwell. The following is a letter that was attached to the official report filed by Verdant Vines. It was intended for the chief investigator, White Clover, and upon her recommendation, a copy has been included with this report. Clover, I hope you're doing all right in Canterlot. I'm sure there's more work than I could imagine to handle there. I don't know how the attitude is, but everyone's a little on edge here, despite the curfews and check-ins. I can't go an hour in the day without hearing someone worrying about this happening over again, or that they'll wake up without the sun in the sky. It's all just silly superstition at this point, if you ask me, but I think everyone else's worry is starting to rub off on me. Don't forget. I mean, it's crazy. How can an entire town disappear without a trace? No word from any other town, village, or city nearby. What's even worse is the rumors spreading around camp, and the pranks some pony must be pulling. Everyone keeps finding these faint, barely visible notes scratched on the copies of the journal we have. I've even found some on my personal copy. They're all cryptic messages that don't seem to mean anything. I'm trying to track down whoever's responsible to correct their poor sense of humor, but I haven't had any luck. Then there's been the ponies complaining about bad dreams and sleepless nights. It seems to be someone different every night, and they'll be barely awake to help the next day. I can't say I've had any, but you and I both know I've never had nightmares. We are reaching out. The worst thing is what Lantern said after finding that cellar. I know the official letter said we looked into it as a last option, but what he claims happened is too strange to believe. We were starting to wrap up before the day, an hour before the curfew. Lantern was on the other side of the farm, filling back in holes and marking them for the next day. He said he heard something, like a knock and a muffled yell from the far end of the field. We tried to call out to him, but he just started running and digging at the ground. We ran over to try to find out what he was doing, and that's when he hit the cellar door. Yes, we, we are, are still here. here. I could knock it up to a hunch, but he says he heard the noise and then just zoned out. He says the next thing he remembers was hitting the cellar door with his hoof, and us shouting at him. We marked it and came back the next morning, but Lantern had been up the whole night. He said he just couldn't sleep. Hopefully he can shake his nerves before they get the better of him. We will not, not stay buried. buried. Good luck with everything on your end. Love, Vines. We are, we are coming for you, too. Bend the back, yeah, 